I imagine a pool of blood, Mr. Wakasa's blood. I saw them around that pool as the um, you know, blood cools and the vapors rise. These would rise with the blood vapors and capturing his spirit. I gather he was a real adventurer and was curious about lots of things. And I hope that spirit of, you know, being an uh, adventurer and wanting to meet new people and see new places, uh, experience new societies, maybe that's captured here too. I've always been struck by him having a, a picture of Abraham Lincoln with him. And I know that he went to a, a really progressive university. And I, I wonder if he was introduced to Lincoln at that university. It's funny, I, I, you know, I always call him Mr. Wakasa. I don't know why. Maybe because I was introduced to him that way. My mother had told me about the story. It, it was the only story that my mother told me about Topaz. You know, we didn't talk much about Topaz. We're a lot like a lot of Japanese American families. And she died when I was 11, so I didn't have a lot of chance to talk to her. And we weren't a talkative family. And my father, who thought that Topaz had killed my mother because she had a rheumatic heart, and Topaz wore her out, and he didn't say anything about it either. But I think uh, she was preparing me for a life, a life in a society filled with racism. But that kind of preparation, I think, is done through stories generally. I think we, we try to prepare our children to help them survive in a tough society, and I, that's what my mother was doing for me. When I scrape the pastel on it, it looks like it's random, but it's not. I try to uh, concentrate it in a certain area, concentrate the red in an area and the white in another area. Most of it disappears, and I know it's going to disappear, but some of it re uh, remains, uh, which is nice, and some of it uh, creates a different texture within the painting. Museums intimidated me because I didn't feel I belonged there. Hardly ever went to museums as a kid or even as, as an ad adult. I thought that there are rules or conventions about whether you go left or right or straight ahead, and I didn't know any of them, so never felt comfortable. In the, but in this one, first of all, it was mainly Japanese in the exhibit. Uh, visiting the exhibit, and mainly Nisei. And so I go in and the first painting I saw was a, a still life. I don't know who it was by. It was, uh, I think, a remembered scene of the Sacramento Del Delta. It was a riverscape. And then the second painting was uh, by, I don't know who it was, but it was uh, a still life. A bo uh, vase of flowers. And when I looked at them, I started to choke up. I don't know why. Because I didn't care about art. And, and then I went on and I just started to get more and more choked up. And then I turned a corner and there was uh, Obata's painting of uh, Mr. Wakasa falling over. I just actually just started to sob. Everyone, all the Nisei around me were crying too. 
and so that that got got me interested in art and I learned as much as I could about Obata and you know I started taking brush painting lessons from his uh, main student Shirley Renter Miller I thought that brush painting ability was genetically encoded in me and all I had to do was clear my mind and let the paint flow and out it would come. And that turned out not to be correct. And, and, but I stuck with it for about a year and, uh, and Shirley was a great teacher and she was the one who um, gave me uh, Obata's paintbrush that he had made in Tokyo for him and his Furoshiki and his inkstone and, and his ink st stick, half used. I understand that he used to have his wife grind his inks for him and, um, and um, Shirley said he was pretty crafty that way. And I've, I've just never had the, uh, I just never felt that I was, uh, that I had the right to use his brush. So I'm not good enough. And so I'm going to give this to his granddaughter. And, and she, first it's going to go on an exhibit at Stanford, but after the exhibit's over, I'm going to give it to his granddaughter, granddaughter and and she said that she'll have future Obatas use it. And so I'm glad it's going to kind of go forward. When I'm doing these, I kind of think of the word tenderness um, and see if I can uh, capture a feeling of tenderness in Mr. Wakasa's spirit. It's nice. And I, I, I actually think these these do have a tender feeling, all because of the monument. When you asked me, Nancy, to paint his spirit, that was quite a challenge. But but I'm glad you did because it took me to a place I've never been. And maybe that's part of the thing with what's happening with the monument taking a lot of us to places we've never been, lovely, lovely places. Um, so, thank you. One thing I did with these that I'm proud of is I stopped. Because you can see how you can just go on <laughs> indefinitely. And beautiful things will come and go.